we are going to talk about the Madison Square Garden rally that just took place. It was historic. There's so many amazing, incredible things that we could talk about that rally. However, unfortunately, because people can't take a joke and because of the weaponization of language from the left, uh, what we're going to be focusing on for this segment today is actually Tony Hinchcliffe's section of Madison Square Garden. Um, he was actually one of the very first speakers to open the entire event. And he is a comedian, okay? For anyone who's unfamiliar with Tony, he hosts the number one live podcast in the world. It's called Kill Tony. Uh, basically, they pull buckets out, names out of a bucket. If your name gets pulled, you get to come up. You get to have 60 seconds uninterrupted to be able to give your best material, make a joke. Some people are incredible. Some people bomb. And uh, either way, then Tony and the other judges on the panel roast them. And it's very enjoyable. It's honestly like my favorite show. I love comedy. I watch Kill Tony every single Monday religiously. And so uh, this was a, a little bit cringe for me to see. Um, not only this take place, but everybody's reaction to it as well. Um, so, so you guys have a little bit of a better understanding. First, we're going to play a joke that actually hit just so you're kind of a little bit more aware of his comedy stylings for anyone who is unfamiliar. The other side's got a lot of crazy endorsements. Swift, Eminem, Leo DiCaprio, Beyonce. Every day the Democratic Party looks more and more like a P. Diddy party. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's what you guys want. <laughs> um. <clears throat> so that was actually after he told this joke, which we're about to play, that did not get such a good response. So let's go ahead and play this one. It is absolutely wild times. It really, really is. And, uh, you know, there's a lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> We're getting there. Again, normally I don't follow the national anthem, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very they don't, very they don't play that part with the, with the clip. No, that, they don't, it, they it, don't it, play it. him saying that often. Or the audience that... reaction that shows that like, even the crowd wasn't totally down with it. They yeah, yeah, exactly, it. exactly. So obviously there has been a lot of blowback from this, specifically on the left, definitely some people on the right as well. Um, I have a friend whose dad is heavily involved in politics and he's literally texting me like, did Tony just cost us the election? Uh -huh. He's being really dramatic. I like, <laughs> let me just preface by saying that, but um, it is both the left and the right, but more specifically the left. Uh, now we're able to see here Tony's reaction uh, to what he actually said in response to AOC and Tim Walls actually doing a little live stream <laughs> to their base um, covering the Madison Square Garden rally. And uh, essentially what he said is, these people have no sense of humor. Wild that a vice presidential candidate would take the time out of his busy schedule to analyze a joke taken out of context to make it seem racist. Puerto, uh, I love Puerto Rico and vacation there. I make fun of everybody. Watch the whole set. I'm a comedian. Tim, might be time to change your tampon. <laughs> um, now, let's go ahead to the next one and let's see specifically what Tim Walls and AOC had to say about this. Oh, this is good. People in Puerto Rico are citizens. They pay tax and they serve in the military at almost a higher rate than anybody else. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like super upsetting. Obviously, it's super upsetting to me. I, my family is from Puerto Rico. I'm Puerto Rican. And like the thing that is so messed up that I wish more people understood is that the things that they do in Puerto Rico are a testing ground for the policies and the horrors that they wish to, mm -hmm. and that they do unveil in working class communities across the United States. No, that's what they do in a and socialist. I need people to understand that when they, L listen, when you have says something accidentally. some a-hole calling Puerto Rico floating garbage, um, know that that's what they think about you. That, <laughs> that is, is exactly like, what... that's just what they think about you. Yeah. It's what they think about anyone who makes less money than them. Come it's on, what they think social about social the people who serve them food in a restaurant. It's what they think food. about the people who, who fold, fold their, their clothes, clothes in a store. Like, you're dude, right. Are you serious? The... Oh, wait, there, there was a part where she said about, uh, pick, I think there was something about, uh, uh, 
crop in the in the fields. Well, there. remember back during COVID when she said, uh, you know, in response to perceived hatred of of Asian Americans, guys, everything's fine. Don't be afraid to go to a PF Chang's. Like Asian <laughs> people work at PF Chang's. Right. I have never seen an Asian person behind the counter of a PF Chang's. But can, can you appreciate like what she just said there? She basically equates with Puerto Ricans making less money, s- folding your clothes, serving your food, and there was something about um, farm work in there in the longer clip that she said afterwards. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's basically. Uh, not demonizing, but uh, de- de- great demeaning all of Puerto Rico by then fitting what Surgery. her preconceived notion their of Puerto Their virtue signals is. are nearly always racist. Like the, the whole no yeah. voter ID thing where they're like, oh no, we it's racist to request voter ID. I think it's a little bit more racist the fact you're implying that black people don't know where to find a local DMV or how to look up a bus route and, to be able and, to get and, there, which is the actual justification these people give. And Amy, if, if my only sample size of Puerto Rican people was AOC, I will agree with him that it's a floating pile of garbage well, but, but they, they, <laughs> they, they make these they, they, she says these things like my parents are Puerto Rican yeah and she was I guess either born or raised in the Bronx like the, the problem with Tony Hinchcliffe's joke is it presupposed knowledge that he had as a result of visiting Puerto Rico that other people don't that it's not he's not referring to Puerto Rican people as garbage but they have a landfill problem on the island of Puerto Rico mm-hmm. everybody who's been there knows it I only knew this learning it afterwards mm-hmm. so he has an intimate knowledge of Puerto Rico because he vacations there knows that they have landfill problems garbage issues but nobody else does mm-hmm. and then you and then you get politically motivated bastards trying to weaponize something yeah. he said about the dirtiness of a country of a of a territory or uh, mm-hmm. land versus the dirtiness of the people you call chicago a hellhole shithole you're not referring to the people of chicago you're referring to a poorly governed mm-hmm. city that is a crime ridden hellhole you know what's funny about this do you see what um sunny said from the view the puerto rican annoying lady in the view no. she's like like well, Donald Trump, I'm a Puerto Rican woman. We're not garbage, Donald Trump. Like, I'm like, d- did he say it? Like, he did he go up there and endorse and it? Did he write and the and script with Tony? No, like, and I'm like, sure. Why he, are they, they addressing really, it to Trump? They released a statement saying that, like, what Tony said does not reflect Trump or the entire campaign. Well, of course overall. it doesn't. I feel like Joe <laughs> Rogan probably signed off on, on some of the jokes. I would say that's probably how Tony got a position. Like, Joe Rogan runs the uh, Mothership, which is the comedy store where Kill Tony runs runs his show yeah. so i'm assuming maybe oh. some of the fallback goes to joe rogan that's not like nothing i've read Speak that's just man. speculation speaking of uh, trump in puerto rico it reminded me of one of my favorite moments of trump's first term in office i forget when exactly it happened the hurricane but he came out and said that oh you know i just got off the phone with the president of puerto rico and everybody was clowning him because he's the president of puerto rico who he was <laughs> talking to as the territorial governor but trump was apparently completely unaware of that yeah <laughs> But again, like Amy was saying, <laughs> but he, he, he didn't endorse these jokes. I, but why, I, why Puerto Rico is the part that's very confusing. Is, to me. Oh you could have gone for Haiti. So Haiti is uh, relevant, and it's way well. Dirtier. Jack, Jack Posobiec had put out a tweet and said, "Is it a coincidence that Kamala Harris had put out something of a campaign video about Puerto Rico before the joke?" Mm. And so people were like, "Oh, is Hinchcliffe working to sabotage?" <laughs> uh, more likely than not, Hinchcliffe might have seen that video and thought, "You know, oh, I'll make a joke about Puerto Rico now." Yeah. Like, he well, makes jokes about everyone, and that's his style of comedy. Is he is an insult comedian? He is a roast comedian. It is a specific genre of comedy where yes. he makes fun of everyone. If you did not want that. Maybe don't bring. No, I'm gonna actually share like further thoughts on what I think about the actual joke itself. But um, if we can move forward a little bit, I want to show you guys. Biden actually gave some commentary on this as well. I know you saw this, Viva. Yes. Um, so let's go ahead and hear what Biden had to say. <laughs> All right. There's still All the Puerto Rican that, that I know, or Puerto Rico, where I'm in my home state of Delaware. They're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so, goodness. So it's, it's, it's okay for him to call literally 50% of America, and at this point probably much more, Trump just took a lead in the popular vote, actually, mm-hmm. by very marginal percentage. It's okay to call 50% of the American populace garbage, but Tony referring to an actual issue with garbage and the way that the island, like the, the way that the um, the shores flow, like the, the garbage just naturally comes onto the island. Like he is making light of that. Biden is calling human <laughs> beings garbage. So what you're saying is citizens, his like, citizens. Yeah. Yeah, what you're saying white, here. Spanish, yeah. gay, women, everybody. You, you, you he hit everybody. What you're saying here is you could put half of his supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. Yeah. No, 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 not anymore. Now you're 
Yeah, now it's all, garbage, all of them. Like that's yeah. it. mm-hmm. It's but it, what's wild about that video? First of all, the longer version, the whole statement in context is even more shocking because <laughs> he's reading off a teleprompter and you still can't understand the words that are coming out of his mouth. <laughs> but he says garbage when it, going to the people and not to the object where Trump was not Trump. Uh, Hinchcliffe was talking about an island being having a garbage problem, and he says, "You people are garbage." Yeah, <laughs> this guy's still the president. His DOJ is still prosecuting Donald Trump. His DOJ is still prosecuting political prisoners, as far as I'm concerned, in January 6th. Yep. Yeah. And he's coming out and calling the people that he's prosecuting garbage. Is, right. he, trying, is he trying to sabotage her at this point? Like, we keep Honestly, joking about that. But he like, could be. That's a tel- written script from the teleprompter mm-hmm. that I don't even know if he thought of or not. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. There's also one more that we're going to highlight, which is actually George Lopez, oh. who yeah. spoke oh, God. at a Kamala Harris rally um, in this Arizona. Guy. So let's go ahead and play this and hear what he had to say it's not pertaining to this but this just really shows you the hypocrisy of the left i have not seen any you know hit pieces any negative press about what this man has had to say so let's play this donald trump said he was going to build a wall and george lopez said you better build it in one day because if you leave that material out there overnight So, can't hate him. It's, it's true. So, Sim- it's okay, so it's okay for him to basically make the assertion that all Mexicans are thieves, right? Which, again, is an indictment of their character. He's calling out something about the person, but it's inappropriate for Tony to make a joke about a piece of, like, like an island. Mm-hmm. He's not talking about the people. Again, he's referring to the specific place, the location. How come that version of events is okay? But what well, Tony well, had to on. say he, he, isn't. he was talking about Mexicans. I thought he was talking about Texans and yeah. the stereotype that they see. He no, was in Mexicans. Mexicans. Oh, oh my goodness. I didn't really. I need, I need yeah. to go. I'm, first of all, I'm joking. But I'm. Uh, that, oh. that, I, no, I knew he was making a Mexican joke, but he gets to do it. Because he is Mexican. Tony yeah. Hinchcliffe, I guess, is not Puerto Rican if he were. That's why they say comedy is a canary in a coal mine, though, because like when you start not being allowed to say jokes about certain things, when the establishment starts getting pissed off about certain jokes, yeah. that's a red flag. You know like, where the okay, borders are. Okay, nerve there, so what's mm-hmm. going on? Why can't I talk about this thing? Yeah. Oh, God. The, the bottom line is they would have flipped their conniption fit over something, over anything that occurred that night. If it wasn't Tony Hinchcliffe, it would have been, been something, something else. else. Oh. It would have been yeah. It would have been not enough diversity on the stage. It would have been... And so I think like the conservatives who come on and say, oh, i got to distance ourselves. Quit being a bunch of freaking sissies. Yep. And oh, it's stand-up comedy. Maybe you think it's a bad idea to have a stand-up comic at a political rally. Grow a pair, grow some thick skin, and quit being a bunch of well, snowflakes that melt every time the sun comes out. 100%. And I'm going to sound, sound very polar again because you brought another oh, guy what? that I split on. <laughs> like, I think the joke didn't land. And it wasn't a good joke. It wasn't that funny. But, 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 it was but, okay. Yeah. But then again, this guy, like, he's tremendous. He's the, Might he, be the best. He is right, the right best. Now. He's okay. his Brady roast. That was a thing of genius. Yeah, I've never seen night. anything like it. His success on YouTube is unbelievable. Like mm-hmm. nobody does it like him. I'm addicted to his. But show. I, I, didn't you go see him? I, huh? I went. I was front row in Madison have, Square Garden in August. You mean where whoa, Nazi whoa, whoa, rallies whoa, whoa, whoa. are held? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nazi. I, I was at a kill Tony Nazi rally. But, but, back you know who August, else wanted to kill Tony if Tony was a Jewish person or a gypsy? Adolf Hitler. But to drive the point across, I think he's he's an extremely intelligent gentleman he's very very sharp do, have to be you do know that they're now retroactively trying to go back to his brady roast and claim that it was overtly racist oh, and that he should be canceled <laughs> the, the best thing is i pulled up at john leguizamo for anybody who's following him on twitter uh he's gone full woke like this is terrible you come after the puerto rican community you're coming after me even though he's not puerto rican <laughs> whatever I went back and pulled up one of his jokes from a special he did I don't, 15 years ago where he makes fun of Jamaicans, Jews, and Latinos in one joke. Like, okay, rules are rules, Luguizamo. You're canceled, and you should you know, be deplatformed and shunned from society. Mm-hmm, yeah. I like your style. I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't believe it. I don't think he should, but all, they should live by their own rules. Exactly. The thing is that this guy is keep, keeping something so important and alive. Whenever the shorts from his channel come on my feed, I go like, ooh, we can still do this? Mm-hmm. Like, it makes me hopeful that people can say things but they can't he literally even says in that speech for anyone who watched the full thing that every single week they consult him with a new list of words that he's unable to say on the show on kill tony and they often like it's a live audience so they say them and then they end up bleeping it out for the actual youtube version but like it's free speech is being impeded comedy is being affected by this woke mind virus that's been occurring for these last several years so honestly this is my opinion overall let me know what you guys think 
maybe not the perfect time and place, especially considering how we know the way that the left likes to weaponize things, especially considering we have grown with the Latinos um, by about 6 to 8% gain compared to the 2020 election. So a lot of effort has been made there. A lot of progress has been made there. So maybe it wasn't like the perfect time and place, but on principle of comedy and on principle of free speech, like I can't be bad at this. I, I'm That's mad. how I feel. I'm at the I don't think it had a big impact at all, though. Like I don't think there's a single Spanish person out there that was voting for Trump that's now not voting for Trump. Ah, not at all. Oh, hate but socialism. Also, here's the other thing, though. Like At this point of the campaign, it should be about moving the independence right and i don't think anybody who tuned into tony is gonna want to vote for trump that wasn't already voting for him like these are mostly males free but, but, beach supporters but, but, 2A but supporters amy, 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 as well because that, a lot that, of them are from for, texas for, for like, how highly i think of him think i think of him i watched a whole set uh -huh. and it was criminally bad like i can take i can take i can take it no no it wasn't there funny were a couple i can of jokes take any jokes. jokes you mean there, by comparison to his dude, usual standards? yes it's but brilliant when, but when you compare him to like the average comedian it was still like okay it was decent it was even good i would say it was oh, good man. it wasn't if, great if, if that was like maximum that, difficulty conditions too like imagine trying to throw pro trump in the halftime of, of a super bowl and like having he, he will do great he will do great but he's an exception uh, though but like like uh, a typical politician try to throw them into like the middle of a sports game but man i wish there for that i just wish a joke landed as a latino person i, I would have did you laugh I, I didn't laugh. I thought it was funny. I would have I would have defended the joke with my life, even if it was more offensive. Mm -hmm. But if it was funny, I would have defended it. But there, well, I mean, there have there been were some, some who came out and defended, right? There Did were some that? jokes that were a little bit tired cliches, and I could appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, when you say like what, the, the issue, yeah, it might not have been the best time for an edgy comedy, um, but. In as much as it might alienate anybody, I don't think it will. Mm. I think it might unify people. I, I think Puerto Ricans actually should be looking at this and saying, these freaking Democrat scoundrels didn't give a sweet bugger all about the plight that we've been in for years, mm. but now that they think they get to use us as a political weapon as victims, Pretty. now they're paying attention to us? That would piss me off more than anything. When they come pandering to the Jewish community and mm. you know, try to get the vote, and they're like, well, I, I don't really play that identity politics game to begin with, but pandering to ethnic identity when you have been ignoring them or even acting against their interests for years, that would piss me off. And if I'm Puerto Rican, I'm pissed off not at the joke, at the response, because they don't care about you until they can use you. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, 100%. I, I think part of the part of the problem is that I, I don't think comedy should be political. People go watch comedy to enjoy things, to, to laugh, to have fun. And when comedy gets political, it stops being funny. They had a comedian open at a political rally so even though comedy should not be about politics mm -hmm. they brought comedy into it and that that's part of what we're seeing now is that all the the blowback is political it's not it's not even about how the joke wasn't funny it's about how it's racist and it yeah. it caters to white nationalist rhetoric and the, the, tony is a nazi because he was at madison square garden where as we've established nazis also were 85 years ago but, but if it was so, funny it will be easy to defend it, it, it would have been but and that's why nobody and i would have been the first guy him. i would have made a video yeah. i'd be like oh he said that was really funny yeah, the right you know? isn't really defending him with as much full-throated support as we normally give mm -hmm. free speech uh, because the, the right. because it wasn't funny Mm -hmm. That's no, but problem. also the, the right, I think, still thinks you can gain points by being not uncivil, but by being like, you know, by placating the mob when you absolutely can't. I had, you guys know who Tyler Fisher is? Yeah. He does the best Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro expression. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. impression. Oh, so I, I had him on the channel <laughs> so yesterday. Good. And um, so then he sends me a tweet of this woman who says, I went to a stand-up show and this guy started making transgender jokes. And yeah. I, was, I wasn't I was offended. I was just disappointed. And I'm like, lady, if you don't like stand-up comedy, don't, don't go, go to a stand-up comedy club. And I also said, lady, I guarantee yeah. your marriage is going to end in divorce with a sense of humor like that. Yeah. But Amy and I went to a comedy show. We can't oh, the girl who left? Yeah, we oh went to a comedy God. show. A friend of, listen, <laughs> the girl literally left. Yeah, a, a friend of ours invited us. He had a date. And the, the guy who goes on stage, what was his name? Oh, he's the guy who goes, huh, comedy. What's his name? Norm. The, no, Mark Norman. Mark Norman. Yeah. He goes on stage. Mm -hmm. The girl, I'm sitting here. My friend is here. And his date is sitting here. First joke. The lady gets mad, stands up, and leaves. <laughs> Can you imagine what's wrong with a person in their life that they would react like that to a stand-up comedy show? We were having a really good time. Went there, got popcorn, and she just stood up and left. No, and and, and, and ruins the evening for everyone else. Like a selfish, a self and righteous. Uh, okay, I'll, I didn't I'll think about her again after that. Girl, but, yeah, <laughs> that's I get a what great you're filter. Saying. That's a great filter mechanism, though, to be honest, because like you'd never want to deal with a person like that. So good, like that's, so that's a good way to get ah, rid of her. Oh man, the best thing that could have happened to him, like good. 
good that he yeah. filtered her out immediately. Massive red flag, but yeah, uh, see you later. Before we move on, I just want to say, Tony, I love you. If you see this, I still love you. <laughs> we all love him. That's all I have I to see say. love in her eyes as she says it. She, she <laughs> yeah. means it. I uh, love Tony so much. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go to the next one, it'll be the perfect segue. Can we just bring up, we don't have to play the clip, but just bring up Walls and AOC on screen together? Um, okay, oh, maybe perfect. not the best picture, but perfect. <laughs> first of all, a Great. lot of people are saying she's using a filter because she's getting older and wants her skin to look, you know, smooth and whatever. A lot of people are saying she's looking pregnant. I got that when I posted this, like, oh, AOC's got the prego face, um, which I know from experience. My wife had it three times. Um, she's glowing. 